Jerusalem, my city. Have you been there? I call it my city because I once owned it, all of it. Well, it actually belonged to God, and he called it his city too. You cannot truly understand the stories of the kings and prophets unless you know Jerusalem. Once a tiny village on a hillside, Jerusalem grew into one of the most famous cities in the entire world. Even in modern times, it's a focal point of three major religions. Jerusalem, God's beloved city, chosen by him as the location of his temple. Perhaps the first mention of Jerusalem in the Bible is when Abraham met the mysterious priest Melchizedek. At that time, the city was named Salem, as in Jerusalem. Abraham returned from defeating the kings who had kidnapped his nephew Lot, and Melchizedek brought out bread and wine and blessed Abraham. The first communion ceremony. Since Melchizedek was a priest of God, Abraham gave him a tenth of everything second mention of my city was during the conquering of the Promised Land by Joshua. God commanded the Israelites to conquer the land and destroy the peoples who lived there. Joshua conquered most of the country but was not able to conquer my city. At that time, the city was named Jebus. The next important mention of my city is a lesser known passage about my battle with the giant Goliath. After I defeated Goliath and cut off his head, I took it to Jerusalem. And there's no record in the Bible about why I did that or what I did with the head after I got there. Some people believe I placed it on a hill outside of the city because of the hill's name, Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Some of those people think the Gaul part of Golgotha comes from Goliath. Can't you just imagine what it might have looked like for a skinny shepherd boy to plant a spear in the ground and then place a giant's head on it? Can you just imagine how defiantly that young boy might have stared at the magnificent city and hurled insults and threats at it? I can imagine it. Because I grew up only five miles south of Jebus in a small village named Bethlehem. I've loved Jebus ever since I was a kid. It always infuriated me that Jebus had defied Joshua and the Israelites and that it continued to exist independently until my time. The city seemed impenetrable. Steep ravines on three sides, a huge wall to the north. No one else made me angry. It was my tribe, the tribe of Judah that was supposed to have conquered Jebus. Every time I tended my sheep and saw the city lights in the distance, it made me furious. I promised myself that with God's help, I would someday change that forever. The next important passage about Jerusalem explains why it's called the City of David. After the death of King Saul, God said I should move to Hebron, where I controlled the lands of the tribe of Judah. From Hebron, I was at war for several years with King Saul's son, Ishbosheth. After the death of Ishbosheth, I was proclaimed king of all of Israel. Now, this did not mean that the 12 tribes were automatically united and ruled by me. Each tribe had elders that I had to appease while forming a united nation of the 12 tribes. It seemed a good idea to move the capital of the country to a new location and have a new start. I thought about choosing my hometown of Bethlehem, but it didn't have a good enough water supply and wasn't in a good strategic location from either a military or a trade point of view. I knew that Jebus would be a great location to start my new kingship. All I had to do was conquer it. If I could do so with little warfare, I would have a ready-made walled city that was located perfectly to unite the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> have you seen those walls? I love that city. My men and I marched straight up to it. We looked at the impenetrable walls and steep hillside, and the people of Jebus stood on the walls and made fun of us. <laughs> they felt so secure with their position. They said even the lame and blind could defend their city. Seemed to me they might be right. In my 
exasperation, I turned to my men and said, whoever leads a successful attack will become commander in chief of my army. But we will not be successful attacking the walls, so come up with another plan. My nephew, Joab. <laughs> he never told me how he got the job done with so little damage to the city, but I've always assumed he did it using some sneaky plan. Joab was crafty and mean. I've heard that he captured a Jebusite shepherd and tortured him into telling him all about the city. He learned that the city was vulnerable through a water shaft, so he and his men climbed up the shaft. Then he opened the city gates, and the rest of my men rushed in to defeat it. It's just a rumor, of course. But he did find a way to get in, and he earned the right to be my commander-in-chief, which he remained until my death. At long last, I owned the former city of Jebus. After our victory, I renamed it Jerusalem. It was also known as Zion, or the city of David. The original city of David was only about a dozen acres located on a very steep hill. Steep ravines on the east, south, and west. The north side was its weakest point, as it would continue to be for the rest of the city's history. To the north was a shallow depression which led to Mount Moriah. And maybe you remember Mount Moriah. It was the location where Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac. During my time, it was the location of the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. I bought the land of Arana to build an altar to God. He offered the land and sacrifice materials to me for free. I could not sacrifice anything to God that cost me nothing, and I told him that. After my death, my son Solomon built the temple on that threshing floor. As you can imagine, with the temple located outside of the city gates, the city started growing to the north and the areas surrounding the temple. It also started growing to the northwest on the hill known as Zion. It could not grow very much in the other directions because of the steep ravines. Over the next few hundred years, the city would expand its walls as it grew. Eventually, the small hill of the original city of David would be a tiny part of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was located in the land of the tribe of Benjamin, near the border of the tribe of Judah. That is one reason that when Israel later split into two countries, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin stayed together as the southern kingdom. My family members ruled as kings of that southern kingdom until 582 BC, when the Babylonians completely defeated the Israelites and took them into exile. My family had ruled for more than four centuries. When the Israelites left Jerusalem in exile, the entire city and its walls fell into disrepair. Decades later, the Jews started returning. They rebuilt the city and the temple, but only as a shadow of its former self. My beloved city. Many of the people cried when they remembered Jerusalem and the temple in the glory years. So that's the geography and political importance of Jerusalem. But I have not adequately explained why Jerusalem was not an ordinary capital of a country. The story starts more than 400 years before my time, with Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. While in the wilderness, the Israelites built the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place that functioned as God's home on earth. He lived in the area of the Holy of Holies that housed the Ark of the Covenant. Imagine that. The God of the universe living in a tent amongst a bunch of wandering Jews. When Joshua and the Israelites conquered Israel, the tabernacle and Ark of the Covenant were left in the town of Shiloh. Although the priests continued to sacrifice in Shiloh, it does not appear that God still lived in the tabernacle. It was just an empty tent with a bunch of golden artifacts. A few decades before I became king, the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant but returned it to a new location. After I became king, I took 30,000 able young men of Israel to bring the Ark to the city of David. The entire country celebrated with me as the Ark was moved under the direction of God's priests. 
The oxen stumbled. The ark slipped. Uza instinctively reached out to steady it and was struck dead by God because of his irreverence in touching it. I... I was so scared that we took the ark to the nearby house of Obed-Edom. After three months, I dared to try to move the ark again and took extraordinary pains to do it reverently. Whenever those carrying the ark had walked six steps, I sacrificed a bull and fattened calf. I was thrilled. I, I danced before the Lord with all my might. I couldn't contain myself. When we reached the city of David, I placed the Ark of the Covenant in a special tent, and there it remained for many years. When Israel eventually gained peace, Nathan the prophet gave me permission to build the temple, a, a, a building dedicated to the worship of God. However, God rescinded that permission and promised me that my descendant would build the temple. I was devastated, but I completely understood. So, I started gathering the materials that my son would need. Toward the end of my life, I gave Solomon detailed instructions about ruling the country, including building the temple, and I provided most of the materials he would need. It took him seven years to build it. After it was built, he furnished it and placed my dedications in it. In an amazing ceremony, Solomon moved the Ark of the Covenant from the city of David into the temple. In the ceremony, they sacrificed so many sheep and cattle that they could not be counted. The priests placed the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies of the temple. And there was nothing in the Ark at that time except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it. The manna and staff of Aaron that Moses had put in it no longer existed. When the priests withdrew from the Holy of Holies, a cloud filled the temple. God had come to live with his people again. Jerusalem became God's city. Jerusalem and the temple became the focus of life for the Israelites. That day was the highlight of the Jews, the chosen people of God. God had fulfilled his covenant with Abraham by giving us the land of Israel. He was our God, and we were his people. We built him a temple, and he lived with us. That day was the day that we had all longed for. Jerusalem was the home of God. Nothing could be more precious than that. However, the stories of all the kings and prophets is the shameful record of the Israelites refusing to consistently worship and serve God, and the penalties they paid for being unfaithful. Jerusalem was where their Faithfulness or unfaithfulness was often demonstrated. It is no wonder that my city, Jerusalem, the city of God, became the city where God once lived. <laughs>